for having me. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Art and Talk. Art and Talk is an online interviewing platform for artists to share their art, creativity, and passion. Thank you so much for watching today. We're going to be continuing with presenting a collection of artists who are currently exhibiting in the Caribou exhibition at the Cultural Council of Palm Beach County in South Florida. The name of the exhibit is Caribou, and Caribou is a Swahili word that means welcome, come in. Our guest visual artist is a uh, draws and we're going to be exploring some of her beautiful and powerful drawings. Please stay connected with us on our Facebook page, Art and Talk, and also on our YouTube channel, Art and Talk. Please subscribe, like, and share. We appreciate your support. Thank you again for watching, everyone. I'm Leslie Sue, the host for Art and Talk, and I'd like to welcome our visual artist from the Caribou exhibit, Sheikah Hardy. Hi, Sheikah. Welcome. <laughs> Hi, Leslie. Thank you for having me. Oh, also, I'm so grateful that you're here. And I can't wait to find out about your amazing drawings. Um, could you start out, Shika, and share with us a little bit about the uh, caribou exhibit itself and, and how you found out about it, um, how you got involved with it, and then we'll progress into uh, your particular artistic journey. Okay, um, I found out about it um, from the curators, Trina Slade Burks and Anthony Burks, who um, are ATB Fine Arts Group, and they linked up with the, um, the uh, Culture Council for Palm Beach County uh, to exhibit uh, 25 Black artists in West Palm Beach. And Trina sent me a, well, she tagged me in a Facebook post for, you know, certain artists that maybe we would be interested in, you know, submitting our work. And I had already worked with, uh, been in a show with them for, through Continuum. So this, this was a continuation of working with them and working and presenting my work in Caribou. Mm -hmm. So I'm very thankful to them for that. Yes, mm -hmm. for that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yes, and the Caribou exhibit is um, continuing until I believe March 13th. Uh, I think March 15th, 13 or 15th. Yes, okay. Okay, very good, mm -hmm. very good. All right, so let's go ahead and find out, Shika, if, if you would please, let's find out about how you began art. What, what's your whole background with, with art and how you got involved and whatever you'd like to share with us, please. Okay, I started drawing at a very early age, at eight. Um, really through reading, uh, they would take us, you know, to the library to read, and I would constantly check out this one book with uh, Peanuts, with Snoopy and Charlie Brown, so I started drawing, you know, just sketching with that, and, and from there, as I grew a little older with playing with my cousins, we would, instead of, I don't know if you remember, like, the paper dolls that, that we would, uh, put clothes on paper clothes and things like that. So we would just draw our own paper dolls. So I started drawing paper dolls. And then from there, I got interested in fashion illustration, just from reading the, the newspaper. And I would also, like I was really into hip hop music and, and I would draw my favorite hip hop artists, you know, from the magazines and whatnot. And from there, I ended up going to International Fine Arts College, but not in commercial art, in fashion design because of that fashion illustration interest. And I ended up graduating from there in 93, but I didn't go, I didn't take that career path. I ended up basically getting regular jobs, you know, just regular nine to five. I ended up working in the, the legal career and, but I always would draw. I never stopped drawing, which I hear, you know, with a lot of artists. And I always had that gift. I didn't have formal training. I would take art classes in high school. Mm -hmm. And as an adult, as I left high school, I would always take uh, art classes at the, you know, local art center. Mm -hmm. And that was mainly in Miami. And about five or six years ago, I moved to West Palm Beach and I started taking free art classes at the uh, Center for uh, Creative Education. 
And that's where I started taking classes with uh, Craig McInnes, who's been a great mentor and teacher with me. And he introduced me to Anthony and Trina. And that's when I started. Anthony really uh, encouraged me to put some artwork in continuum. And that, and, and I would, I would volunteer and work with them behind the scenes. And I finally, you know, after him encouraging me, you know, a couple of years, I just, <laughs> I went ahead and, you know, entered into Continuum and got in and I sold my, my uh, piece, my first time entering, you know, that, that uh, showcase. That was a big deal for me. Mm -hmm. And from there, I, you know, I, I entered again, and that led me to Caribou. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. I'm just mm -hmm. wondering, Shika, I'm, Shika at eight years old, picking up a pencil, it just felt mm -hmm. natural. And then you saw that you just had this ability to draw, like you say, like you were drawing the, the, the peanut cartoon characters, and it was just something you mm -hmm. resonated with and, and just came, came very easy and natural. Very easy. It's so, so easy that if someone told me they couldn't draw, that was like saying they couldn't breathe. Like I didn't, I, it didn't compute that other people didn't know how to draw too, you know, or as well. So it, it came very natural to me. Mm -hmm. And so I, I didn't, um, I, I just always pushed it aside. But now, you know, I'm, I'm going forward, you know, having friends encourage me to put my work online. And, and, and this is where, where it's gotten me so mm -hmm. far. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm in, I'm in those beginning stages and it, and it, and it feels really awesome. Mm -hmm. So you feel like you're in the beginning stages of kind of like being immersed back into the, the arts and particularly uh, your drawings. Exactly, and the, the professional route as right. far as becoming a professional author. Artist. He is a professional artist, yes. And you uh, mentioned, Shika, you also have an interest in, in like um, pop culture. That's that's an area that, that you seem to resonate with. And then you also do like the fashion illustrations. So that whole world also influences you mm -hmm. in, into your art as well. Yes, I, I see those influences in my art with, you know, with fabric, how I added fabric, um, you know, with um, free and fierce and also um, the piece behind me. I, I see those fashion influences in my work. Mm -hmm. Would you like to go ahead and look at the, um, the first piece that's actually in the caribou exhibit and, and um, have some elaboration? Yeah, that's, that's fine. Okay, very good. Give me just a moment and I'll pull up the first mm -hmm. image. Okay. Okay, that's uh, free and fierce. And um, I did this, well, first I was focusing on the, uh, the Afro itself and I wanted the woman and the Afro to represent that energy of being free and fierce. Mm -hmm. So, you know, her pose with her fist up it's, you know, it's a pose that represents the shackles being off and also the fierceness of her, like she's ready for battle. Mm -hmm. Now this mm -hmm. is um, fierce and free, but it's also particularly related to um, the female because it's, it's a female portrait. So is mm -hmm. that an important element for you to incorporate, Sheikah? It, it was a little, um, the audio was a little choppy. Sure, sure. Can't really hear your question. Uh, sure, um, in this drawing, which is amazing by the way, um, it's free and fierce, and it's also specifically addressing the female because it's a female portrait. Um, is that correct? And, and would you like to elaborate on that relating to you know the, the female gender? Did you hear that, Shika? I caught something about the, uh, addressing the female aspect. Is that what you said? Yes, yes, in reference to the, the free and, and fierce. 
Okay. Um, yes, I think um, as as a female, um, there there are certain um, confines, I guess. You know, as as just being constricted as a as a female in general, and um, feeling free to express that that fierceness or that you know that warrior nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. I hope that and I'm not sure. mm -hmm. So, okay, so that's kind of like the, the energy that, that's embodied in uh, this drawing. And is it correct that this is charcoal? It's charcoal, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what I've, uh, I, I really enjoy drawing with charcoal. Um, it, it just allows me to just bring whatever image I have in my head, you know, for just the easiest. I don't know, like I've, I've worked with, um, I enjoy watercolor as well, but just for different reasons, mm -hmm. you know, uh, cause watercolor, you can't really control. Um, you kind of just have to go with it, like wherever it's going, you just, that that's how I, I am with it. Maybe someone else has better control over it, but uh, with charcoal, I'm able to uh, control it better. So I just, I just enjoy working with it. Mm -hmm. And Shika, can you share with us a little bit about the process that you went through with this? Were you looking at a photograph? Did you have a person there? Um, how do you start up in, in your charcoal drawings? If you don't share with us a little bit about that. Okay, this one, so it, it, it depends. Uh, sometimes I might take a picture of, of someone, but this one I found a photograph that I modified um, I modified it and um, added my own uh, fabric and the um, Afro was from my imagination. And also Anthony Burke's uh, senior helped me with the Afro. Um, it, it was struggling a bit, but he helped me take it to another level. Um, and I, I, um, yeah, that's, that's the, uh, that's the process with, with this one. A lot of times I'll just uh, freehand, but because of its size, like pushing myself to, to make it as, this is like one of the largest um, portraits that I've done. Mm -hmm. So I did the uh, projector instead of um, the freehand, but I, but I don't really map it out so much. Um, you know, like some people do, do the grid, I've never drawn in that way. I, I'm usually freehand. Okay, so it would be correct to say you kind of have a loose structure as you approach mm -hmm. the um, paper at the onset. Yes, that, that would be free to say. Because I start off with a circle square, you know, I'm constantly measuring with my, um, with my pencil, you know, from far away, I don't use a ruler or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So you just basically kind of trust your eyes, so to speak. Exactly, exactly. Yes. This is so amazing and is so beautiful and the energy that comes through and it's so powerful um, and amazing attention to detail. Um, talk to me a little bit, Sheikah, if you would please, about the, um, the facial gesture, um, you know, her whole facial composition. Um, I think her facial, I think her expression, you know, it's, it's really powerful. It's really piercing. Um, you can tell she, you know, she's not one to be <laughs> played with. <laughs> you know, um, a friend of mine told me what she notices about the portraits that I do is the eye. She was like, the eyes are so, so piercing. And, you know, we'll like make up backstories about the, the women and what we think, you know, their personality is like, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I have a question, Shika. Um, as you were creating this, did you have this whole like image of this person, woman, and the whole kind of theme, you know, kind of playing out, you know, inside of you as you were actually creating it? Um, sometimes I'll start off with um uh one idea, you know, and the art can go in a whole nother direction um I really was focusing on the afro itself okay and um 
and the like I said, the woman representing the Afro and representing the same energy. And then at, as I went along, I, I decided to add the fabric. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm thinking of um, having a series, I'm not sure what I'll call it, but having that fabric uh, throughout the series, kind of like connecting each, each drawing together. Mm -hmm. And then I see you have the text um, on the fabric as well, saying free and fierce, it's like wrapped around her, her shoulder area. Right, right. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely yeah. beautiful. Is there anything Thank else you that you so have? I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I, I was just thanking you, that's it. Oh, yes, absolutely, it's just it's just amazing. Um, and this is the one from the um, exhibit um, currently on it at Caribou. Um, yes. Is there anything that, yes, uh, that you'd like to share about this uh, before we move on to your next one, Shika? Uh, no, that's it, we can move on. Okay, all right, very good. Mm -hmm. All right, <laughs> wow. This one is called uh, Throwback, and she's a uh, throwback to the 60s when the uh, Afro became popular during the, uh, Black, during the Black Panther movement. And um, I have the Black Panther fist, you know, the pick. I wasn't gonna put it in her hair like how they would wear it in the 70s, but I decided to put it on the fabric going uh, over her back. Mm -hmm. Now with was her, this, with, her, with her looking back, you know, with the throwback, like she's looking behind her. So that Afro is, is inspired by, by those women of, of that movement. Mm -hmm. Now, was this an actual picture of the 60s that you saw or did you just kind of look at some pictures and make a composite and then let that kind of come out in the portrait? Yes, the same, the same, I uh, did look at different pictures and I had a friend of mine um, model for me with the, with that fabric. Mm -hmm. I guess you can say that's her back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, I, and again, the Afro, uh, the shape of the Afro uh, was inspired by uh, just those Afros that they were wearing in the 60s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in, in terms of her facial expression, what, it, what are you aiming to convey? Not just in her facial expression, but I do find that very, very powerful. And mm -hmm. I think in terms of portraits, a lot of times um, as human beings, we, we look at the face. And of course, you know, we're, we're looking at the Afro, as you mentioned, and as, as symbology, and then also right. the drapery. But um, what, is, what is it that you're aiming to convey here um, through your, your beautiful, um, drawing? Well, I am conveying beauty. I do, that was like first and foremost, I wanted them to be absolutely beautiful and stunning. So I, I would say black woman's beauty and um, her resilience. I think that just comes through. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we kind of have a little bit of a, a theme here with with kind of like the advocacy of of the female and being empowered and mm -hmm. specifically um, for black women or right. Right, for all women, but specifically for for black women. That's correct. Mm -hmm. That's yes. correct. It's absolutely magnificent. She is so beautiful <laughs> and so alive. Thank you. Thank you. I, I get that a lot too that people will I get that as feedback a lot that people will say it, your your pictures have so much life to them. Yes. Um, is there any area of a portrait that you find a little bit harder to render, or is it all about equal? How does that play out for you, Shika? Okay. What I don't like is teeth. <laughs> I don't like drawing teeth, so I I tend to you know avoid that um as far as the rest of the facial features i don't find anyone necessarily hard it might be hard on a particular person you know like um a, a friend of mine I, I did a portrait for him 
and I, I spent forever like on his nose, just kept, you know, going, <laughs> going over that same line, you know, maybe in that situation, but I can't say any particular other than teeth because I, I'm not that crazy about drawing them, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this one is charcoal as well? That's charcoal as well. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you'd like to share about this? Um, I have a couple of questions, but I, I want to make sure that um, you've expressed all that you'd like to. Oh, yes. You could, yeah, that, that's about it. For this one? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, we do have a few more images that, that I'd like for us to get to. I just have a couple questions. Uh, Shika. Okay. okay. So there's Shika and she's in front of her um, easel or wh wh wherever you, you draw. Mm -hmm. now, and you have a blank piece of paper or, or canvas, watercolor paper. Um, and in this particular case, we've, we've looked at some of your amazing drawings. Um, there's nothing on the paper and there's, mm -hmm. and now you have the charcoal. Now you have I'm trying to get into the, the, the process uh, through your eyes, Shika. So mm -hmm. um, in these two particular portraits, you, you kind of had a, a, a pre-concept, so to speak, of, of what you wanted to express. Mm -hmm. And then, yes. Yes, I, I did. Um, with these two pieces, I, I said, I'm just going to do what I, what I do well, which is, which is faces. And I enjoy drawing afros and you know I just wanted to to put my my best foot forward so to speak I wanted to, to highlight what I did best mm -hmm. right yes now when you see that blank piece of paper do you envision it already being there like you you kind of look at it is there like a pausing reflective moment like okay this is where her head is this is maybe where the fabric is. Okay, I think her lips are going to kind of line up there. Is there any of that going on? Yes, I I, I tend to think about um, how it would look if I stood far away. Um, so I'm thinking about the entire um, outline of of the picture, and um, yeah, I I do think about that. Mm -hmm. I think about I think about how it how it would look from far away in a gallery. <laughs> mm -hmm. So are you actually stepping back at certain times? Um, kind of keeping- Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I step back, I, I draw upside down. Um, um, I take a picture a lot of the times and look, look at it through the picture, through the phone, you know, just to get different perspectives. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Thank you for sharing that. Um, mm -hmm. During the process also, Sheikah, I'm a little bit of a process junkie, so, so I, I love to find out about artist uh, processes. Um, okay. So the, as, you, as you're working up your, your portraits, um, there is sort of like a, um, and, and, and let me know if this is correct, um, sort mm -hmm. of like a, a holistic approach in, in terms of like, like one or two areas is not more in process than the other ones like is it all worked up at the same time how how is that like movement and that flow okay for me um after i map it out um i pretty much do i would call it an underdrawing, where i'm uh putting all my shadows where they're supposed to be or, or where where i think they're supposed to be. So I draw really light with a graphite pencil first in case I have to do what I call doing surgery where I might have to move that eye over a little bit, <laughs> you know, or fix that, you know, that's what I call it doing surgery. So I draw light enough that I can erase before I put down that final layer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that, that would be my process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have to be like in a certain like mood? Do you have to be in a certain like state of inspiration? Does that, is that like a non-factor <laughs> uh, for you to like actually start to, to draw something? Well, mm -hmm. 
felt, yes, but I don't like that because I want to be more structured because I don't want to only draw when I feel like it, like that, you know, I'm not, I don't get as much work produced. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting better at um, scheduling a time to draw. And once, once I schedule it and start drawing, you know, I, I'm there now. It's, it's almost like exercising. Like you don't feel like it sometimes, but you do it. But once you're exercising, you're into it. So some, when I'm not in the mood to draw, sometimes I'm, I pretty much discipline myself to draw anyway. And once I'm, I'm drawing, I'm, I'm good. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. And I, I like the word you use, discipline. So basically, irrespective of how you feel, your approach, mm -hmm. she is you, you want to be disciplined and you just are like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, start this uh, drawing or I'm going to be, you know, you're in the middle of a drawing, you're going to going to complete it, irrespective of how you feel exactly. your mood or what's going on. It's like, you're just going to keep that focus going. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm definitely getting, getting to that point. Mm -hmm. um, Sheikha, I have mm -hmm. a couple questions before we move on uh, to your next um, image. Uh, if you would, please. Um, and I actually asked Andy Hollum in this uh, when I interviewed mm -hmm. him. And I, I'd like to get your take on this. Okay. Um, because you obviously have very advanced skills in, in drawing and you, your work is, is absolutely beautiful and, and so highly representational and, and, and powerful as we were saying. Um, mm -hmm. Do you feel, Shika, that anybody can learn to draw? Um, I do feel anyone can learn to draw because um, I think I always tell people if you can draw a circle, a square, I, in my opinion, you can draw. You know, if you keep at it and um, keep practicing, I, I feel for my myself that I was blessed with the talent and I'm very grateful for with this talent and being able to share my talent but I do feel a person can learn to draw mm -hmm. if they wanted to really learn and, and practice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay thank you Shika um I'd also like mm -hmm. for you to can you give us in um your perspective what is the the breakdown in drawing, like how much of it is actually, you know, your visual acuity, actually seeing what's there, how much of it is eye-hand coordination, um, being observant of the light, um, what are the factors that, in your opinion, make someone uh, at least have, or at least have the potential, the, the preliminary skills or, or skills to continue to be refined that make somebody um, excel in drawing? Um, I would say they really would have to be open to looking at things in different perspectives. Like I said, with, you know, turning it upside down, um, be open to, um, criticism, <laughs> be open to criticism and yeah, that. I think you need to be open and not be too hard on yourself. Because sometimes I've, I've been in art classes um, with people who feel they, they have no skills and they, they kind of give up so easily on like that first mistake or, you know, it, it didn't turn out right. Or I, I think you just have to be open, open to learning. Okay, so it's, it's openness. Mm -hmm. Being open in general and openness to learning and being sort of like uh, looking at things in, in a different perspective. Right, right. You, you would have to look at your art in a different perspective. Like I said, you, you'd you have to, because even now, like I'll, I'll have it, you know, right side up, turn it upside down and see all type of I, I, I guess mistakes, you know, that, that the lines are not right and your eyes play tricks on you, they, they just do. You know, even, even at my stage, if I, if I turn it upside down, I might see a line that I thought was going one way and it's, it's completely going another way. But for whatever reason, from, from that perspective, it looked right. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So, so you definitely would have to change, uh, change your perspective um, as, as you're going and creating the drawing. Mm -hmm. And then, as you said, also kind of being gentle with yourself. Exactly. Well. Don't, don't, don't judge yourself, you know, so harshly, especially you just begin in anything, you know, you're not going to be um, as good at it, you know, as, as obviously if you keep practicing and practicing, mm -hmm. but you still have to make room for improvement. Even uh, like I said, when I was taking uh, classes, um, when I first moved here, I, like I've been drawing all my life, but I took drawing fundamentals just to go back to the basics. Like, why not? Why not mm -hmm. go back to the basics mm -hmm. every now and then? Yes, yes. Thank you so much for, for sharing all this, Shika. Um, mm -hmm. Get ready to move to the next image if you're ready, but I, I have one more question for you. Okay. Um, because you're so skilled in, in drawing and seeing and, and all the other you know required um, skills and abilities, do you feel, Shika, that you have like a heightened sense of seeing, like when you're out and about in the world, walking down the street, going to work, or just in, in your home, do, do you pick up a lot on, on the visual aspect of, of your environment? Um, I don't know, it's hard to say. <laughs> that's hard, that's hard to, to measure as compared to, to someone else. So I, I'm, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. sure if I'm I'm more aware in, in that sense. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shika, would you like to move on to your um, your third image? Okay. Sure, that's, that's good. All right. Very good. Just a moment. Okay. <laughs> that's um. Those are my nieces. They modeled for me my twin nieces. Mm -hmm. And this one is called um, Sistar. Mm -hmm. And also it's called Sistar, I'm keeping my eyes on you. That's from uh, one of my favorite movies, The Color Purple, mm -hmm. a song in the movie. And um, this is my piece that sold that continuum, my, my first piece that I, that I put in the show. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I, I'm really proud of it. And I, I like their expression. <laughs> um, we took a lot of photos. I chose chose that one. Um, it just really represents their, their their special bond, being sisters and being twins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have this amazing knack to really um, express the the energy of the um, you know the people that you're doing the portraits of. You you know through the you know expressions. The facial expressions are just I'm really, they're absolutely compelling and so captivating. Yeah. Um, how long do these pieces roughly uh, take you, Shika? Roughly about uh, 10 hours, um, maybe 15, maybe longer. Mm -hmm. I, I know definitely like if I, if I do one, it's probably about 10 hours. Mm -hmm. Uh, for for one face, so this one could have taken me twenty hours. Um, I can't remember, but yeah, roughly about twelve hours or so. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, and Shika, the the concept for this, um, they they already have a close bond, and then mm -hmm. and you wanted to express that, and then also from the influence of the color purple, it all kind of generated the, this idea, and then you just went ahead and executed it. Mm hmm. Yeah, I um, I I wanted to show that that sisterly bond. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to also show images of black people, black children, you know, and just in everyday life, just having fun, you know, playing around. Mm -hmm. Just that innocence. I want I wanted to convey that. Mm -hmm. And uh, Shika, in some of your other work um, that, that we're not, you know, looking at today, just kind of getting a, a little bit broader perspective of, of some of the um, other drawings that you have, um, do you particularly um, focus your portraits on, on females? Um, not always, not always. Um, I've, I've drawn... Uh, certain male celebrities 
it it just really depends on I guess my mood or you know what what I feel like um drawing and mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. do you feel um Shika that um part of your message is um expressing these different um you know uh qualities of, of female empowerment does, does that play a factor in in terms of like Shika's message it does play a factor it, it it plays a factor um i i think it conveys you know i i won't i don't want to say it. um i think it conveys beauty i think it conveys everyday life i think it conveys our our culture the richness of our culture mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so these are some of the things that when a viewer looks at your work um that you want them to walk away from those types of um attributes is that correct? exactly that that that's a fair description mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um now is it different when you're uh rendering a piece of for example this is your family as you mentioned as opposed to somebody else is that does that have an influence on you? Because these are people that you know, you've known them for many years, you've gone through holidays, celebrations, and all sorts of you know experiences with them. Is is that have any impact on the actual drawing itself? It does because when I'm drawing someone that I know, um, as I'm drawing it, I can see their features start to come out, and I feel like, okay, there she is. There's you know, like when I was drawing my niece, I'm like, they're they're shy, like you know, it it just the, the energy, I guess, starts to, to come out. I start to see their personality mm -hmm. through the artwork. So yeah. Mm -hmm. The connection between them is just so beautifully felt and expressed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I that's what I wanted wanted to um, to showcase that sisterly bond because I didn't um, I didn't grow up with sisters. So to see them, number one, as twins and watch them grow from babies and, you know, just to see them have that bond, I did want, I did want that to show in mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and I do believe I, I captured that. Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. The, the feeling behind your work is just beautiful, not only the, the actual representation with your charcoal, but they're, they're just absolutely exquisite. And as I mentioned again, the, the energy behind it is just really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Is there anything else that you'd like to share about this particular um, artwork? Uh, no, that, that's it. Okay, so if you feel ready, we'll go ahead and, and look at um, the last image. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay, that one is called Ascension. And um, this one I came up with, um, I was commuting, riding the train uh, from Miami-Dade to West Palm Beach and just looking out, looking at the clouds. And uh, it reminded me of, of an Afro. And I wanted to, to make a picture with the Afro using colors of um, the sunset. And, and I just decided to, to make her blue. She's completely from my imagination. Mm -hmm. And um, I have her up in the clouds, like contemplating or dreaming. You know, it, it's really all up, I guess, to interpretation, but um, I just feel like she she's ascending. So that's why I, I named it uh, Ascension. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten a lot of positive feedback about this one as well. Mm -hmm. um, so she can she it's like really powerful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. So she's she's ascending so she's she's ascending she's she's going up 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 she's rising above the 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 world so to speak is is that correct is that your 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 take on what you were aiming to express yes that she's she's rising above a lot of um, 
a lot of, you know, what what it, all type of things that people go through, like is to reach in her dreams, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. leveling up, you know, just, but, but dreaming about it also, also kind of in a dream state as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's really captured with, um, with her face. And you mentioned them in the Afro or the sunset colors and also combining them with the sky as well kind of brings you that upliftment and that whole like ascending, ascension feeling. And then also some people were saying her, you know, her hair also with those colors, it looks like fire. I mean, that wasn't my intention, but it does look like fire also. Mm -hmm. And I noticed her earring, it almost looks like a new moon, but that was actually just a hoop earring. It was, and I didn't notice that until you just said it, but <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it does look like a moon, mm -hmm. and like the skin all, all kind of, her, the color all, all kind of looks like um, the sky, like the, a dark sky against a light sky almost. Mm -hmm. And down here, um, can you talk to us a little bit about the, the landscape? Um, the landscape is uh, to ground her. So she's not just floating around. So it, it, it was put there to, to give her some, some grounding. Mm -hmm. And um, what medium is this? This is acrylic. It's acrylic. acrylic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and yes. I, it, I'm, I'm learning with acrylic, I'm not, um, I'm I'm not as experienced as as with charcoal, so this is a newer newer medium. But mm -hmm. I'm enjoying learning mm -hmm. learning with acrylic as well, and using colors. You know, getting comfortable with with colors. Mm -hmm. And this is where you, um, you're sort of exploring more of your imagination. Um, you know, kind of like it, it has this, you know, evoking, as you mentioned, Chica, you know, this dreamy quality and, and ascension feeling. So um, are you going to be exploring um, this this other part of you a little bit, you know, more kind of like imaginative? Is that something that you, you kind of like feel like, yeah, I want to, you know, kind of maybe do a couple more paintings of this? Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely want to um, explore um, with acrylics and 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 mixed mixed mediums and and you know different series all, all of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And specifically with with portraits. Uh, yeah, specifically because that's that's what I enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. I enjoy portraits, and um, uh, I'll I'll see see where it goes. I have a lot of uh, I have a lot of ideas. And um, that's what I'm, I, I'm gonna focus on now is uh, putting down those ideas on, on canvas, on paper. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Shika, we have a few more minutes. I'm gonna stop the screen share. Okay. And um, I just have a, a few questions and, and I'd like to um, see what else you'd like to share with us about your artistic journey. And, and again, I'm so grateful for all that you're sharing with us. It's just so fascinating to see things you know, through your eyes and, and your process and, and your beautiful art. Um, so in, in terms of your art um, and your ideas, because you just said you have a lot of ideas that are kind of kicking around. Can you talk to us a little bit about what inspires Shika? Where, where do you draw your inspiration? And you did mention it with, with some of the um, images that, that we you know, just looked at. What, what, what inspires you? What, what kind of gets you going and says, okay, wow, I want to create this. And I want to, as you said, you know, stay open to learning something else. What, where's your inspiration drawn from, please? Um, I would say it's drawn from so many things. It could be music. It could be a conversation. Um, it could be fashion. It, 
it could be anything that that might spark an idea and and sometimes a, a whole image might come come to me and I'll um I'll jot it down like I, I pretty much have a, a I guess you can say like a diary of, of ideas that that I've jotted down and yeah I would just say it, just life itself can can be inspirational I can't really say one thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and as far as like 2020 goes um you know with the pandemic and everything did that inspire you more to create or did you do less could you just tap a little bit um with that Shika I think it inspired me more because um you know a lot of a lot of people, a lot of us have been through so much through 2020. We, you know, we've lost loved ones, you know, uh, for me. Um, it made me, like I say, get more disciplined because life is so short. You, you know, you want to take advantage of all the opportunities that's presented in front of you. So it, it did um, change me in that way. Um, producing work. I produced a lot of work in a, in a short amount of time um, this year, and, mm -hmm. and I had never done that before. So now I'm like, okay, I can do this, you know, so <laughs> yeah, so it, 2020 really put, put that battery in my back to like, you know, get it done. Just mm -hmm. get it done. You know, the time is now. Mm -hmm. we, we don't, we don't know what, what, tomorrow may bring so mm -hmm. yes that's so beautifully said uh thank you Shika, for sharing that um we still have a few more minutes and then we'll need to wrap things up um i'm wondering if you could share with us what it feels like for you to be in the zone what is that like for you um okay to be in the zone um really nice <laughs> it's uh, it's meditative um it's 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 just like free flowing when, when i'm in that zone with you know when i have my music going and i'm just you know just creating yeah it, it it's a it's a, a very nice light feeling um i'm probably there smiling and you know i'm <laughs> I'm in a happy state with, when I'm in that zone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and your art puts you in that zone. It does. And and not just me, I think anyone. Um, I remember volunteering um with Craig McGinnis with his uh murals. Uh at, he did that at the Sunfest. And they had um where you could paint uh by colors, you know, just for people walking by. And everybody would, when they would come and start painting, they would be like, this is so nice. I need to paint more. You just, just, it feels so, it's like, yeah, painting is just, it, it, it really puts you in a meditative state. Mm -hmm. I think that's for anyone just to be in that, what, that creative state. It, it's whatever it is that you do that, that gets you into that, that calm, you know, that calm state. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you so much, Shika, for sharing that. That's beautiful. That's a, a beautiful um, place to be, yes? Yeah, it is. It yeah. Is. <laughs> um, we'll need to wrap things up, Shika. Um, this has been so inspiring. And, and again, I, I, I can't thank you enough for, for being here and, and sharing um, with us your artistic journey and some of your images. And um, portraits seem to be of, of all of the, the subject matter uh, perhaps uh, one of the most challenging to actually render, getting the bone structure, the, the skin, you know, the expression and whatnot. And, and it seems to be, you know, quite effortless for you and, and, and a big joy for you. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much um, for having me, Leslie. And um, it, it, it's been really um, less journey um you know meeting people like craig and anthony and trina that mentor people like myself to to go down this path um with expressing our our art and sharing our art and i'm really thankful really thankful um to have this experience mm -hmm. 
Thank you so much, Shika. Um, would, are there any additional closing comments uh, that you'd like to provide, uh, kind of bring us back to the, the heart of your, your art or any advice? And also, Shika, if you could let us know how to stay connected with you, please. Oh, yes. Um, I would say to anyone um, who's, you know, putting art to the side and maybe not, you don't think of yourself as an artist, I, I would just encourage you to just start putting your, your work out there like I did. You never know where it might take you. Um, and also uh, my social media is Chica Hardy Art on Instagram and Facebook, S-H-I-C-A-H-A-R-D-Y Art. And once again, thank you, Leslie, for having me. This is the first time I've done anything like this. So I'm, I'm very grateful. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you, Shika. It's been a, a joy. And I appreciate your uh, closing words of, of encouragement. Um, thank you again, Shika, for being our, our guest visual artist and sharing your art journey and some of your work and letting us get like, a little bit of an insider feel in, into what it's like uh, to create as you do, and so beautifully. So thank you again, Shika. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching today. And be on the lookout. We'll be continuing to bring you a couple other artists that we'll be interviewing that are also in this collection of artists at the Caribou exhibit at the Cultural Council of Palm Beach County in South Florida. So please stay in touch with us on our YouTube Art and Talk page and also on our Facebook page. And thank you again for watching. Thank you again, Shika, for this great interview and for inspiring us. Thank, thank you again, you, everyone. Thank you so much, Shika. Thank you again, everyone. And we'll talk soon on the next Art and Talk. Until then, be well and be blessed. <laughs>